So in a previous video, I, I spoke about the centrifugal turning moment on a propeller. And uh, I just wanted to sh explain how this centrifugal turning moment tends to bring the propeller blade to the uh, fine position. And what I said there was if we have a propeller blade, and if this was its plane of rotation, and it's rotating around this axis here, and the center of gravity of the propeller, let's say, is just forward of, of the plane of rotation. Then the centrifugal force for the propeller will act out through the center of gravity. And that centrifugal force is composed of another a number of individual vector components. So there'd be one along, say, this y-axis, one on this x-axis, and one on the z-axis. So if I was to look at them, and in these two in particular, the x-axis and z-axis, then uh, we would see, so here, here's the two vectors here, these two guys, you can see they tend to bring the propeller blade to a fine position. And, that, and that's fine. Um, but one of the viewers um, from uh, wonderful mechanics in uh, the Netherlands um, correctly pointed out that this would happen even if the center of gravity uh, wasn't outside the plane of rotation. So if the center of gravity of the propeller blade was on the plane of rotation, you would still get this centrifugal turning moment. And uh, and they're they're absolutely right, and and this is why. So if we take a, a flat plate and it's um, you know it's perfectly symmetrical. So uh, we have um, say the z-axis. So the z-axis going out through here. We have an x-axis and we have a y-axis. And you know if if because it's perfectly symmetrical, let's just say that the center of gravity for the entire piece is right here at the center. However, we're going to look at a particular area, and this area has a mass dm. And let's assume that the center of mass of this dm is on is on this x-axis. So the centrifugal force acting out through that will be whatever this mass is, omega squared times the uh, radius vector. Now let's rotate the flat plate so let's put it on to in uh, give it some uh, angle so there it is there and the centrifugal force is still going to go out through the the center of this mass but now let's think of it as um, a component on this z-axis so coming out through here and then a component on on the xy axis there So if I wanted to uh, look at, at this sub, sub vector, <laughs> um, I would say it's broken into uh, both a horizontal and vertical component. And let's look at those in terms of these new axes. So let's say that the x-axis, uh, when it's, when it's um, inclined, is now called the x prime, and the y-axis is now called y prime. Okay, so uh, if I'm looking at, at this vector, it can be broken down into uh, a component on the x-axis and one on the y-axis. And if I want to get that value, I would say it's whatever this, this vector is times sine theta. So it will be dm, so the mass omega squared times sine theta. And let's just move this vector up slightly. So there it is there. And what I'm looking for is um, a moment about the z-axis. So the moment is concerned with the perpendicular distance from the axis. So I want to get this component, a component of this vector along this y prime axis. So that would be the angle theta again. So then this component is that vector, which is this, this quantity here, multiplied by cosine theta. So it's that quantity multiplied by cosine theta. Okay, so we're looking at the moment now. So the moment is this force times the distance. And let this, this distance be, you know, small value of dx 
or dx prime because we're on the x prime axis. So the moment will be dm omega squared sine theta cosine theta dx prime. Now looking at sine theta cosine theta, if I look that up in a um, book of tables, here we have it here. So I'm just going to uh, reproduce it. So it's saying sine 2 theta, so sine 2 theta is equal to 2 times sine theta cosine theta. Or divide both sides by 2, I get sine of 2 theta over 2 is equal to sine theta cosine theta. Or a half sine 2 theta is equal to sine theta cosine theta. So I'm going to substitute that in for these two values here. So the, the moment, the centrifugal turning moment, due to this little piece here is uh, the mass time omega squared over 2. There's the, the half I should, uh, we got from down below. Sine of 2 theta times this distance dx prime. So if I wanted to do it for, for this plate from the center out, uh, I, would have to, uh, I would have to integrate. So it becomes omega squared over 2 sine 2 theta, the integral uh, of dx times dm. So what that's telling me is, you know, this, this total moment is made up of, you know, individual moments from different parts of this flat plate, okay? And they would be going in this direction on one side of the plate and in this direction on, on the other side, about the axis. So if we added them, them all up, you, you could think of them coming from one, all of these small, uh, moments coming you know coming from one point and similarly down here so we could think of it as you know one moment from one point on this side of the plate and one moment from this side of the plate and that is the centrifugal turning moment so you can see it's it it's not just that it's um uh, an aerodynamic shape where the cag is away from the plane of rotation you know, if it's a flat plate, it will still tend to come in to the um, uh, fine pitch angle. Okay, so I hope that clears it up, and I haven't uh, I haven't uh, confused anyone. All the best. Bye bye.